Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Lhasa, which is the most important city in Tibet. I've been wanting to visit this city for so long since I was a kid and learned and, and actually saw pictures of the Patala Palace. But I'm excited to be here. It's an honor to be here. I was invited by Travel China Tibet Tours. Today we are going to go on an ultimate Tibetan street food and local food tour of Lhasa. But before we start eating, we are going to visit the Patala Palace, which is an unbelievable giant fortress. We're gonna walk to the top, we're gonna tour the fortress, but I know you can't take photos. Um, and then after that, we're gonna begin the ultimate food tour. We're gonna eat some of the, the best Tibetan dishes, foods. I can't wait to share all the food with you in this video. So we're just getting into the entrance of the palace. It is a cloudy, slightly rainy, but at least not raining right now, day. Approaching the base, gonna get through the security checkpoint first. They have quite some serious security and checkpoints, but we've just arrived. This is into the palace grounds now. Wow, we are at the base of the palace. Oh man, it is just, it's a fortress. It's magnificent. It's giant. Made it through another ticket checkpoint and now we are actually onto the stairs to begin our ascent. And you can see the red palace which is in the center which is older and then the white palace which is painted white. Oh man, and then we've just climbed up about 15 steps so far and I can already feel my heart beating. By the way, Lhasa is at 3,656 meters, which is 11,990 feet. But you have definitely got to take these 490 steps uh, slowly and methodically and just slow movements. Uh, Dolma, who is our guide, was telling us people zigzag on the steps to, to save energy to, to ascend. But they do have an oxygen station right there, but I think mostly for emergency purposes if you need some oxygen. Yeah, the air is thin. The Red Palace, which is the center of the palace, it dates back more than 1,300 years, whereas the white part of the palace uh, dates back, I think, to about 1645 when it was built by the fifth Dalai Lama. It's a Zong fortress, but now it is a school uh, to bring up Tibetan Buddhism and uh, students of Tibetan Buddhism and Dalai Lamas. getting to the next entrance point. Uh, but if you look at these massive blankets guarding this door, these are made from yak wool, uh, which is waterproof and weatherproof and they can hold up to anything, the yak wool. It's huge, it's just like a drape that just comes down from the windows. Step inside of here and then just, the walls are just painted in such well-preserved, impressive paintings. Uh, but then up, if you look at the top of the doorway there, those are snow lions, which are the sign of Tibet. just entered into this courtyard. Uh, the place here is we call the Yangshar, and there is the monks living all around here. Ah, okay. And every year in the eve, the monks, they show the ritual dance here, and Dalai Lama, he used that window to watch wow. the dance over here. And here is the uh, school, the Shui Primary ah, School, okay. and there is the two bells, wow. school bell, two which drums. is made by Yak Lama. Two drums, wow. then take a flight of steps and then a wooden staircase which leads into the Patala Palace. Turn off the camera here. We are gonna go inside. I'll let you know how it is when we come out on the other side. Uh, but this, this is really entering into the palace. Step 
sitting outside now after touring the, the Patala Palace. And we went to the White Palace, we went to the Red Palace. Unbelievable. Uh, we went to chapels, we saw the tombs of the Dalai Lamas, the various assembly rooms, and just like what's unbelievably impressive is the network, the labyrinth of rooms connecting to chapels, connecting to tombs, connecting to the construction and how it just like leads from one place to another and you can get so lost back in there but the meaning the symbolism the history the the ornate details was mind-blowing and just the construction and even the ventilation systems and the way they allowed light into the palace from the Patala Palace. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Can you see? Yes. Thank you. <gasps> oh, awesome. We made it back down from the palace from here. We are, again, just look at the, the majestic views of the palace. From here, we are going to a local tea house. Uh, so it is a big part of Tibetan culture to hang out at tea houses, eat some noodles, eat some food, drink tea. Uh, Doma is taking us to a local spot. We're stepping inside to this is a local tea house. Uh, we're gonna stop in here for some tea and for something to eat. Yeah. Do you run these are cups? Yeah, for sweet tea. Ah, okay. Rearranged the seating situation. We got some table space over there, but it's really, it's amazing. It's so communal. You just share tables with others, you have tea, you socialize. So I'm starting off with a sweet tea, and if you look around, uh, most people are drinking sweet tea. That's the drink of choice here. Oh, that's hot. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's almost floral tasting, but you taste the tea, you taste the milkiness of it. And that's scorching hot. That's really good. And it's not too sweet, just lightly sweet. And the noodles, my bowl of yak noodles have just arrived. After climbing and touring Patala Palace, then a bowl of piping hot yak noodles and piping hot yak dumplings. Um, it smells so good. And the noodles, let's start with the noodles first. I see a lot of people kind of like really mix it up. There's just a little bit of yak. These are like thick, hearty noodles um, and very kind of a clear broth with just a few onions in it maybe. Mm. Mm. The noodles are very doughy and very soft. The yak is a little bit chewy and fatty and rich. And then it tastes like a little bit of Sichuan pepper. Kind of has that fruity citrusiness to it. I think you can just pick it up and drink the soup. Okay, let's try the, dump the yak dumplings. And you can already see they're actually very bready. Almost like a bready, steamed wrapper. Mm. Oh, wow. The yak inside of here is much more tender. And it is, rather than a noodle wrapper, it's more of a doughy bread wrapper. Like steamed bread, like bausa kind of bread. Um, but just a little meat for flavoring, a little bit of yak. Yak is not eaten in huge amounts because it's so rich, it's so, it's so warming. And then I think this sauce is for the dumplings as well. It's like a slightly, like a dry chili kind of salty sauce. Really good. 
And I just noticed over on my table, there's also a little cup of chili oil, which I think is for the noodles. I'm gonna add that to my noodles. Add a little bit of this. Oh, yes. Maybe a little more on top of the noodles, since it kind of went into the sauce, into the soup. Okay, there we go. With that chili sauce, you can feel the crunch of the dry chili. And it's, it's not too spicy, but it's very, very fragrant. And all of a sudden, it's getting very, very busy, so sharing my table. But I'm gonna try, we also got a plate of, these are vegetarian, I think they call them momos, but again, these are like, they're like straight buns filled with vegetables, filled with uh, maybe vermicelli as well. Just gonna dip it into the sauce a bit. Mm. Oh, it's mostly mung, maybe mung bean noodles, but a type of vermicelli in there with some spice, with some Sichuan pepper. Mm. With that chili sauce, it's really good. Mm. Yeah. So, to eat a whole plate of that. How are you? <laughs> People are so cool in Tibet. Mm. Very nice, very nice. Good. Mm. I think it's okay to just pick it up with your fingers. That's what I see. Uncle picked it up with his fingers. <laughs> so cool. They're so cool. It's definitely the type of broth that when you start sipping it, you can feel that kind of like oiliness on your lips. It's good broth for your lips. It's like it's like chapstick. Natural yak fat chapstick. And now trying, this is the black tea, which is also common to drink along with the sweet tea. Yes. Mm. It's a little bit salty and very, very light tea. Like you just barely taste the essence of the tea. It's almost soupy, yeah. Oh man, what a gorgeous experience. And I think I just said goodbye in Tibetan. What a what a beautiful place. What a beautiful people. And come outside, oh man, it is rainy. It's still raining, looks like it's just gonna be a rainy, drizzly, cloudy day all day today. But we're gonna get back into the van and we are gonna drive towards Barkor Street, which is the center, which is the old city of Lhasa, to walk around and eat some more food. We made it to the Barkor Street area. This is the old part of Lhasa, so there's just networks and lanes and alleys of old buildings, and it's also where the Jokhang Temple is, which is the center of Tibet. It is also one of the most sacred places in Tibet. We're gonna stop at another tea house. This is a very, very famous tea house in Barkor Street. Uh, Doma said it's packed, but they're known for a few other dishes that we're gonna taste. Just stepping into this tea house, you can just hear this hum of voices, people talking. Uh, people come here to hang out, to play cards, to drink tea. And yeah, it is challenging. You just gotta try to find a seat and sit down wherever you can. Um, this is a, a really popular local spot. Okay, they're leaving right here. You gotta sit down immediately or somebody else will grab you the table. French fry and uh, that's uh, for vegetables, for fried rice, uh, fried noodles. Tibetan fried potatoes and now walking over to find the noodles, which I think over on the other side, it's kind of like, yeah, we didn't have a, 
a local with us or you'd be kind of confused because there's so many different places you can come. Um, okay, you order the noodles here, I think. You have to bring them the card. Oh, so you paid and then and you then get you a card. card and then the you card. exchange it for oh, the okay, noodle. Chow mein. Chow mein. Oh. The tea house of this popularity. What you do is you get your own cups, you get your own glass cups, and then you put down money onto the table. So that's how the lady coming around with the kettle of tea knows that you want tea. Uh, so then she fills your cup and then she takes some of the money from that pile. That's how they cater to the masses at this tea house. Wow, the energy, the action here. People slurping noodles, people drinking tea. This is beautiful. We found another table on the inside, so I think we're gonna move because this is a very, very compact little table here. Okay, we got a whole table. That that age of that table. This is just like <laughs> there's so much going on. And starting with some Tibetan fried potatoes. Mm. Well, I'm sure potatoes, like in these elevations, can go re grow really, really good potatoes. It's really creamy on the inside. And then trying some of the sweet tea here. I really like it because it's not that sweet. And it's not that rich, it's not that creamy. It is milky, but it's just hot, it's warming, lightly sweet. It's a type of, it is the type of tea you could just sit here and just sip on. And then Dolma has a whole bag of fried Tibetan bread, which is very common. I saw many people like take out bags of this bread from their bags, from their purses, um, and start to, to eat it at tea shops. Mm. Well, it's like fluffy and like kind of airy. It kind of has a neutral taste, a little bit salty. Almost like has like a, an eggy texture to it. And I, also I saw a lot of people dip this into the tea. It's just like because the bread is airy, that just completely absorbs the tea. And since we had the soup noodles at the other tea house, we tried the fried noodles here. This is like chow mein uh, fried noodles. There's carrots in here, there's some vegetables, and there's some type of meat. Grab a little bit of that chili sauce. This does look and smell really good. Oh, it is really good. Garlicky and kind of oily with that chili sauce with the, the crispness of the carrots. And again, the noodles are very like doughy. That's Tibetan food, like filling, warming, nourishing, and just like, it needs to be. You need those carbs, you need that fat with this elevation that is tasty. Again, what an environment here. Well, what I think is so cool about these tea houses in Tibet is that they're places for everyone, from young kids to the elderly. Everyone is welcome here. And then additionally what I like is that there are places where you can come just to to chill and hang out and socialize. Um, you, I mean, lots of people have tea, but even if you don't have tea, you can have food, but you don't have to have food. It's really like fully up to you. It's just a social environment. It's just a place where everybody's welcome. And that's what stands out. Oh, it's like coming back out into the, the world. Walking down the street, we've come across a lady who's selling its dried zumo. I think the word is zumo cheese. Um, it's a combination of both yak and cow. I think a breed, a cross breed. Um, and she says that this is very strong, very, very powerful milk made into this cheese. Um, so we got a bag of it. But that's like, it's dried, it's light, it's very, very hard. And put it in your mouth and you kind of suck on it. Oh, immediately it's a little bit sweet though. Really, really like rock hard. As you chew, and as you hydrate it with your saliva, it starts to crumble down. Um, the taste is good. And then we also bought some of her, she has a basket of fruit, um, which is kind of like an apple, kind of like a wild berry. It is a little animal-y tasting. Good though. Okay, and now I'm going to try one of the, the fruits. Mmm. 
Oh, they're really good. Yeah, they are really good. That's like a extra condensed flavor apple. Really crisp, really juicy, and sweet. Hugh, how did you like the cheese? Oh, you're still. I'm still trying to <laughs> chewing on it. Chew on it. Mm-hmm. It's like not too strong of a it's, flavor. It's not too strong. No. It's different. I'm glad I finally tried it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so this entire area, the old square of Lhasa, is basically a market area. There's everything from modern things to daily necessities. Uh, you'll find a lot of yak butter and you immediately can smell that and a variety of different cheeses. But then just walking through here, yeah, I mean, it's a marketplace where you could buy everything. Walking around there also happens to be a huge concentrations of dentists in this area with all the food. Um, yeah, if you want to shop and then stop and get a cavity removed or a teeth cleaning session, this is the place you come in, Lhasa. Got some extra info on the, the high concentration of dentists in this area uh, because in Tibet, lots of people like to have a golden tooth. I think it's mostly for style, as Domo was saying. Uh, so they come here to get a golden tooth. And come to think of it, I have seen a lot of people smile and they have a, a nice golden tooth. That's awesome. Now that is a beautiful collection of dried yak parts and fat. Uh, but yak is often dried to preserve it and then it can be used throughout the year. So this is like a business square in Lhasa. For many, many centuries, people have gathered here to talk, to negotiate, to do business, especially jewelry and different products. This is the fresh local wholesale food market where you can buy vegetables, where you can buy meat, where you can buy all sorts of the essential ingredients that you need for Tibetan food. Some serious chunks of yak butter. There's tea, and what's amazing to me is how much like cookies and candies there are. There's just like, there's just like shelves and shelves of hard candies. Well, and that is a good collection of butters. So cool, there's like six little guys all playing a game on one phone huddled around. Next up we are stopping, it's just a small little like hole in the wall, little closet sized shop. There's a clothes stall on this side, there's a clothes stall on this side, but she's making whipping up some noodle dishes. You can smell the chili, you can smell the oils. Uh, this noodle dish is called lafing and it's made from, it's this blob, a very jellyish blob of mung bean. Not even noodle yet, but it's a blob of mung bean. Um, and as she slices it off, you can just see it like wobble and wiggle, but she slices some off, she puts it into your bowl, she adds on some seasoning, and then she adds on some pickled vegetables, and then she adds on some chili, some green onions, some kind of brothy sauce that smells really good, that looks really good, but that like shaking blob of mung bean, that's great. Let's, let's ah, okay. Thank you. Huh? you sit here? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I've got my freshly assembled bowl of lafing and let me get open the chopsticks and you can see this is pickled pink pickled radish and the mung bean noodle she just slices it so there's slices kind of mixes around with the chili oil it's soupy the green onions in there well those are jellyish noodles they just kind of like melt apart I'll try to you got to be delicate with them Mm. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. There might be some vinegar in there too and some ginger. And then the noodles, the mung bean blob, it just sort of melts in your mouth. You've got the contrast of the, the very crisp radish that's pickled and then the chili oil. I like that a lot. That's amazing. And the toasted chili oil with the sesame oil in there. A perfect afternoon snack in Lhasa. And 
the sun has come out. I didn't think the sun was going to come out today. I thought it was just going to be rainy the entire day. This is great. We're getting some sun sunshine, a little bit of blue skies, and we are moving on. But next up on this corner, there's this is a very cool little corner stall, some Zumo yogurt, which is the, again, the combination of yak and cow yogurt, which is supposed to be very powerful as well. So we've got to try that. There's no way we cannot try that. Cool. Zumo yogurt, open up that lid. It looks really thick and kind of bubbly. Um, and then it does get like smoother as you go down. Mm. Oh, wow. You can taste it's full fat, full flavor, a little bit sour, very rich, and a little bit animal tasty. Yeah, that is Zumo, that's yak and cow mix. Oh, it's really, really good though. I'll get a little bit of that butter. Yeah, that on butter top. stuff. Mm. It's not bad. Yeah. It's good, it's rich, yeah. right? It's lightly sweet, it's yeah. very rich yeah, and tangy. Kind of very rich, yeah. yeah. It's good. And then conveniently right next door to where we just had the yogurt, uh, she's selling Tibetan fry bread with yak meat on the inside. Let's break it open and see see the yak. It's fried. It's like that same type of bread we had at the tea house, but then yak on the inside. There's also green onions, I think, inside. Mmm. Mmm. It's crispy and like blistered on the outside from being deep fried. And then gummy on the inside. A little bit of minced yak in there and then the onions to bring it all together. A little bit oily and flavorful. Very good. Okay, so next up on this food tour, ultimate Tibetan food tour. Right on the corner here is a very famous place for momos, uh, specifically yak momos, I believe. Wow, this is a very cool place. So we're, we've had quite a few momos and doughy things already, but we're gonna stop and I gotta taste the momos here. It's packed and warm. Oh, and they look amazing though. It's packed in here, like there's almost no standing base, but such a cool place. They're in this little room here making the momos and they just have this entire bowl of yak meat mixed with green onions and spices, making them into like little bite-sized momos. And then, very good. Then they make the trays and then I'll give you a whole 360 tour. Over here in the back there is where they steam them. And then over here is where you eat. <laughs> and then I'll clear away some of this okay. for you. Yeah, that's fine. Got in the corner here, legendary yak momos in Lhasa. Wow. Oh, that's delicious. Especially dipped in that sauce. They're juicy on the inside because of the fatty yak meat. It's tender, you taste the onions, and that wrapper is very gummy. And that sauce is like, it is a little bit spicy. It's so juicy. It's so flavorful. And that's why this place is so popular. But the freshness of them, I mean, they make them over there. This is where they're making the dumplings. <laughs> oh, and right over here, this is where <laughs> they were waving. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Mm. A sad moment. Those are the best yak momos I've ever had. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Domo, those are the best yak momos I've ever had. They were so good. Oh man, if I hadn't eaten a few bowls of noodles already. I would have had a whole like over overheaping bowl of yak momos. And then when the sun does come out in Lhasa, it's not even hot, but the, the rays of the sun, because you're so high in elevation, it's so strong. You've got to use sunblock or a hat is even better. And that's why you see a lot of people even wearing kind of cowboy hats or big rimmed fisherman style hats uh, because the sun the UV rays are so strong here in this elevation in Tibet.
Next up on this food tour, Tibetan food tour of Lhasa, we're stopping in this small little shop uh, because we've been searching out this one dish. I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna be, but it is a uh, fungus with cheese, probably yak cheese. And yeah, this dish is very hard to find. I guess it's very seasonal, but also not a lot of places serve it. So we walked around for a while until we finally found this little small spot. Doma asked a lot of people where we could get it. And this place is known for this dish. Pretty much churu, fungus cheese. It's almost like a porridge. Okay, so it has arrived now. There's a combination of the fungus yak cheese inside of this. Yeah, it is like a porridge. Plus there's chilies. There's looks like some wood ear fungus and also barley within this and even a few strands of vermicelli within this porridge and a couple floating chilies as well. And then also it's to be eaten along with uh, momo, which is this bread, which is this steamed bread. And then I also saw some other people add some of the chili, but I will, I will taste it first before adding the chili. That's kind of milky tasting. A little, yeah, a little bit cheesy, a little bit animal cheesy. But very smooth. Kind of kind of yakky. But good. Yeah, that's good. It will be good with chili. Maybe add a little chili to that. Mix that around. Oh, nice. And then also I'm going to grab one of those pieces of bread as well. And I think you can kind of just break off a piece of the bread and dip it in. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. The bread works perfectly because it soaks it up. It absorbs that melted cheesy barley liquid. And that's really good with the dry chili sauce. And they, they serve it to you this really small spoon, I think that's so you don't eat it too fast because it's hot, it's rich. You want to take little spoonfuls of it. You listen around, you hear people slurping. Um, it's very acceptable to slurp this porridge. That was tasty. I enjoyed it. But that's rich, that's hearty, that is for sure. <laughs> uh, now we have entered into Barkar Street and Circle. Uh, but this is also where the Jokhang Temple is, which is one of the most sacred temples in Tibetan Buddhism. It was also built around the 7th century, so the same time as part of the, the Potala Palace. And the ritual here is that many Tibetans, they will do circles around the entire temple. And Dolma was telling me, people will often do three rotations, sometimes in the morning and then in the evening as well. And if you just look around, it's I mean, it's so cool. There are shops around, uh, but then we are going to get to the front of the temple where we'll get a view where there's a square where there's a public area. We're walking our way around. And by the way, uh, Tibetan Buddhists, they walk clockwise, whereas the Bon religion, which is the native religion practice of Tibet, they walk counterclockwise. But we're just approaching the front of the Jokhang Temple. Tibet, but especially in Lhasa, especially around the temple and Potala Palace, but even um, even like en route to Lhasa, you'll see people prostrating, uh, which is where they go down on all fours and then um, all the way out onto the ground and then stand up. And it's a practice of reverence. It's a practice of cleansing, of forgiveness. Um, the ultimate like humbling experience. But then others do a prostration from the countryside or from their village all the way into Lhasa. And some people even do a hundred thousand prostrations. Wow. For 
dinner tonight to wrap up this Tibetan food tour. We're going to a Tibetan restaurant and you from the walking road you come inside, you come up, you come up the stairs and I think they have an assortment of Tibetan food here. Okay, we're stepping in here. We got a I love these Tibetan booths and these sofas. They're so comfortable, they're so chill. Um, stepping in here for dinner for our final Tibetan meal of the day on this Tibetan food tour. Um, a lot of street food this afternoon in Lhasa. And we're starting with some tea. Uh, this is black tea. Oh yeah, that's very salty. Salted black tea. It grows on... Okay, the, she's the owner here. She's so friendly. She's so cool. She invited us in the kitchen to watch her making some of the dishes. Uh, we ordered a few Tibetan dishes. Um, one of them, which she said is her specialty, is uh, yak meatballs with tomato, which she said she makes herself. So she's getting ready to cook. Oh, she's chopping up the vegetables now and just brought in some chilies. <laughs> pretty much everything we ordered. There might be one more rice dish in, or a fried rice coming from Micah, uh, but fresh right out of the wok. I have to start with those potatoes, curried potatoes. They smell so good and her wok skills, that like jet flame wok, the potatoes, she fried them in the oil. She added in the chili oil and curry powder and then just like flame sizzled them. That was a beautiful thing. The aroma of the curry powder, it smells so good. Mmm. Mmm. The curry powder, I think it was Indian curry powder. Um, yeah, it's very Indian tasting actually. Tibet does have influence from India as well. A lot of influence from India. The potatoes have a crispy edge. The curry powder, the chili oil in there, that is a beautiful touch. That's really good. Okay, and then over here, this one is a pickled radish stir fried with yak. And the, the whole sauce is pink because of the pickled radish and the the pinkness of them. Mm, oh wow. This one is incredible. Yeah, the pickled radish, it has a sour, a sourish taste to it. I love that crunch with the thin strips of yak meat. Um, there's some dry chilies in there. There's some green onions, I believe. Mm, that's just like salty. Mm, a little bit of citron pepper in there too. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna grab either some noodles or some rice next. Uh, just because I don't want to eat too much rice, otherwise I'd normally eat with uh, regular rice, but Mike, I got the fried rice, so I'll just have some fried rice to eat with the, the yak meatballs next. She really stir-fried this one up with tomatoes, and I think she like dumped in a bunch of like ketchup-y looking tangy sauce, but it smells really good. And these are, she said she makes these homemade yak meatballs. Maybe onto the rice there. Mm. It's like a sweet and sour sauce. Um, but those are really good meatballs, yeah. Actually, it tastes quite lean, firm and lean. And yak is actually very, like, it's very high in protein. It's just, like, very meaty. The sauce is a little bit sweet. I'll go for a few more of these potatoes into my bowl and then add some of that chili sauce. That is a chunky chili sauce, even the whole, like, stem on there. 
That's awesome. Okay, and I'll go for some more of those potatoes. But I think it's between the potatoes, but actually I think my favorite dish is that stir-fried radish with the acme. That one's the, the highlight of the meal. That's a really chunky chili sauce. There's even leaves in there, maybe bay leaves or... I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I love that balance of sourness and meatiness. That was a, a very filling dinner, but I think most Tibetan food is very filling, very hearty carbs and yak meat and then slightly oily but today has been an amazing day big thank you to bruce and q and the whole team from travel china tibet for inviting me to tibet um, and they're yeah they're so cool they're so accommodating and i'll have their link in the description box below and they offer tours in tibet as well so thanks again for watching goodbye from lhasa an incredible city and i will see you on the next video